Hey, hey, how are you? My name is Swilt. Welcome back to some Magic the Gathering Arena. And today we're playing the final Nickel Bolas that I have yet to play. Probably the meanest of them all, Nickel Bolas Dragon God. If you play this in any other way than just pure control, I don't know what you're doing, because I'm not going to lie, that's kind of all this commander is good for. Is plus one allows you card advantage and forces your opponent to either effectively discard a card with the downside of exiling it, or if they're out of cards, they have to exile a permanent they control. The minus three destroys something that you uh, don't want to be around, be it creature or planeswalker, and then the minus eight, if you ever get there, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. Each opponent, by the way. Just gonna throw that out there. Doesn't matter if you're getting rid of your nickel bolus to minus eight. Kind of scary. Kind of a scary planeswalker. Speaking of scary planeswalkers, we have the other nickel bolus in here. And the other nickel bolus in here. And other scary planeswalkers, we got Tasha, we got Ashioth, we got Liliana, we got Ugin. Kaido. We got lots of planeswalkers in here. Those are our win cons. Our win cons are planeswalkers that will slowly accrue value and win the game. Now, why is this taking so long to talk about? Because we're the villain and we have to monologue properly. The bottom line here is we're playing counter spells, removal spells, board wipes, and anything and everything that I can possibly think of that will slow my opponent down while I get out my nickel bolus. This guy plays in the toughest part of the queues, so you're going to play against the toughest other commanders. So you have to play, like, a scummy little jerk face. Either way, let's hop right into it and see how it goes. Opponent goes first, playing Kaido Shizuki. A... probably just Demir control list. But we do have... technically we have a turn one way to counter Kaido in Mystical Dispute. If we draw our third land, we are cooking with gas. <clears throat> game. I said, if we draw our third land, we're cooking with gas. This hand was too good to pass up. Oh, no, no, no. You're not allowed to play that card. Stop that. No. Bad. Bad, Kaido! Yeah, weren't expecting that, were ya? The instant concede after you counter one spell? Fairly common in Bolas Q. Okay, we're going first. So this is a 1-2, but I do like the Orcish Bowmasters. We could also just feed the swarm on the Sithis. That's not a bad idea. Let's, this should probably work out, right? What's the worst that can happen? I have two six drops and then two two drops. Everything's fine. I didn't really want to mulligan this just because if nothing else we have feed the swarm that can blow up an enchantment that could be annoying. Get another removal spell, that's good. If my opponent just runs out Sithis, we're fine. If my opponent doesn't run out Sithis, we're also fine. Blow up the Al Seed. Go ahead and kill the Destiny Spinner. I will say drawing another 6-drop, not my favorite experience. If we just top deck like two lands in a row though, we're Gucci, right? My opponent's really like, I want to play Sithis! But then I'll draw a, mini a million cards. I hate to break it to you, opponent, but that does not turn off the effect on Orcish Bowmasters. Right? Does it not? Oh no, we'll, we'll, we'll remove a task counter. Egads. I don't think we need to kill this thing. Wash away his goods, or now we can kill this thing. Ha ha! We'll go ahead and remove another task counter, I guess, because my opponent's just gonna sit there and do nothing. Just draw two more lands off the top, easy. Don't know what my opponent's doing, just like straight up, I really don't know what they're doing. I wish I knew what they were doing, but they're just, like, not playing Sithis for some unknown reason. Maybe they're just scared of Sithis being countered. Um. Okay. I guess my opponent's like, aha, they have something with mana value 3 or greater. I don't, but, you know, you can pretend that I do. 
Can I, can I, can I take my turn? Can I take my turn? Thank you. God damn, say those players. No means no. Learn that no means no. I was gonna say I don't hate this hand, but I don't have a black mana source, but I have a scry, but my opponent just said, you know what? No bolus today. We go first with a pretty okay hand into an Oswald Fiddlebender. I like this hand because it has Defabricate. And if we can draw our fourth land for the ring, we'll probably be okay. Why do I like it because it has Defabricate? Because when he goes to sack some stuff, we'll be able to just Defabricate it. We do have two of our black mana that we need to cast our Nickel Bolas. Interesting. I mean, they're not, they're not happy about that. That's not something they want to unearth, but... Yeah, if we, if we counter his trigger... Then he probably is just sacrificing something to get nothing out of it. Because the sacrifice is part of the cast. So if we, if we, uh, if we counter the trigger now... He has sacrificed it and gained very little value for it. I mean, he gets to draw a card, but... He tapped his Oswald Fiddlebender for very little. Okay, Lion Sash. We're just gonna play the One Ring. And just have protection from everything. Aether Flux Reservoir. That says a lot about how they want to win. If we play this, we can blow up Oswald, actually, I'm not realizing. Yeah, let's go for it. Blowing up Oswald might be worth it to set them back a little bit. Just gonna attack the, uh, the Dragon God? That's fine. I will return. Does not bother me. We could have left him in the graveyard to fuel Croxa, but... They do still have this up as a uh, triggered ability. So they do still have to worry about that. But if they try and trigger it... Oh, never mind, we can Orchard Bow Master the Lion Sash now. They really hate Croxa, huh? Yeah, I think we just play the bow Bowmasters here to blow up the Lion Sash because they can't do anything about us doing that. And then we just kind of start holding up our counter spells. Do we keep drawing with the One Ring? Maybe. My opponent doesn't really have anything happening here. They just have the Aetherflux Reservoir trigger always available. That's that's literally it. That is just that is just something that is constantly around and available. Hopefully, we draw some way to kill Oswald. We could draw some cards if they try and do something and see what happens as a result. So they're going for a two-drop artifact of some sort, so we will just draw some cards in response. Not great, but, you know, mana is mana. The Augur could potentially help us find a removal spell for Oswald. Oh no, Glass Casket. How terrible. Oh no, 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 no. See, I'm the only one who gets to play the one ring here, opponent. I'm sorry. That's my ring. Thank you. Yeah, Alright, let's play the Augur. Go hunting for something. Hero's Downfall. How much mana do they have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They can replay Oswald. And we'll draw up the Swan Song. We don't really want to hold up the Swan Song at the moment. In response, we're gonna kill Oswald! Because they probably want to sacrifice that and go get a 5-drop, like, say, a Paradox Engine. And now they can't play Oswald this turn, because he's 6 mana. We chump block with the Augur, obviously. There's no reason to not. The Augur is doing its job. We're losing a lot of life to the One Ring, but it's okay. Metal Cyst, huh? We can steal the Nettle Cyst, can't we? No, we can steal the Phyrexian Germ. Now that I think about it. That's fine, though. Alright, we can Heartless Act that. 
Um, play the underground river. Go ahead and destroy target with no counters on it. Either discard two cards, I will discard a tapped land and a pain land. Well, a shock land. Technically speaking, the shock land might have been better. Sorry, Oswald. I think we've hit the point where we don't want to do anything with the One Ring anymore. Because we're taking too much damage. But I also do want to... I do want to draw some cards. What if I find my Shieldred? What if I find my Shieldred? I did not find my Shieldred. It's fine. I'm just going to take five damage a turn now. Ooh, Blood in the Snow. Fancy card. Let's do some math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we can't do it yet. We need to wait a turn. Yeah, we will drop blood on the snow, two snow covered mountains, honestly, and then. I guess the chromatic lantern. It's gone a little too late to play that out. Go ahead and counter the Karn. No reason not to counter the Karn. Draw with the ring because we're a greedy little person. I don't know, put some lands back. And then destroy the bedevil. We don't die, but we go to one, which is very scary. Well, we can Sublime Epiphany to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Which is very, very cheeky. I don't think my opponent has anything, they just have this, this Vault trigger on the stack. Counter a spell, counter the activated ability, I'll bounce my thing, I'll create a copy, and I'll draw a card. Bounce that. Creature I control, draw a card. Discard five cards. One, two, three, four, five? Nah, Crux of Fate. Crux of Fate. I can't actually counter anything right now with Counterspell. If my opponent plays Oswald, I just have to find a way to kill it. I mean, I do have a way to kill it. It's just via Ugin. I, came into being long before your mind I think we pulled this off, and I think just sitting on 1 HP will be more than good enough. Yep, there it is. Just sitting on 1 HP is more than enough to shut down a mono white deck that now has a 9 mana commander. I was playing with fire with the One Ring, but I really needed to find a way to make it not kill me, because it was going to kill me eventually. I think that ended up working out, though. I think that ended up working out. GG's, Oswald. Okay, we're going first, and this might be a turn one Skyclave Relic, but I don't think that's the smart decision. But it would also be the really funny decision, right? Just turn one pathway into Skyclave. I think the smart decision here is to play the Tapped Ridge, Play that on blue, and if I draw a third land, everything is Gucci Gang. We could also use that to just play Kaido on curve, and Kaido can just be a card advantage engine. That might be the play. Let's see what my opponent does on turn one here. If they hold up any form of counter magic, we might just, um... Not? But I think Kaido might be the right play. I think I just whacked my mic. Nope, I whacked my keyboard. Okay, tapped land. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go for it. This is a bit of a weird one, but I think just playing Kaido to gain infinite card advantage early is an amazing choice. I don't think there's any two mana destroy planeswalker spells. So I at least get two bonus lands for, or two bonus cards from Kaido. 
There is Lightning Bolt. I guess that is something to worry about. But drawing an extra card each turn from Kaido is just wunderbar. Hopefully we actually draw lands. We kept a really risky hand simply because it had uh, the ability to just play a Kaido on turn two. Is my opponent salty roping me? We could have played a Tasha on turn two. Honestly, Tasha on turn two might have been more deadly. But Tasha's... If Tasha got removed, she wouldn't have provided any value for me at all. Whereas if Kaido gets removed, he at least drew a card. So sure, that was, that was two spells to draw a card, but I got a spell out of my opponent, so... Oh, is my opponent just salty roping me? My, po my opponent even had Bedevil. Like, why are they salty roping me? They even had a way to kill Kaido pretty quickly. I got fresh intel. Alright, well, we just win, I guess, because my opponent's salty roping. You might think that this is a very silly game to keep into the video, but you're right, a little bit. But it also goes to show you that um, Historic Brawl's got problems. One of those problems being Dark Ritual itself. I'm a big proponent for Dark Ritual in formats like Commander, where there are four people where you see someone cast an early Dark Ritual and the whole table goes, oh my goodness, they cast a Dark Ritual? All right, we should focus our efforts on them a little earlier than others because they just got ahead. That, that's not a thing in 1v1. In 1v1, it's, oh, they cast a Dark Ritual. They now have a four mana play on turn two. Great. Or a three mana play on turn one. In a deck where you're running like um, Yawgmoth, Cruelty of Gix, that can be a turn one commander if you have a dark ritual. My opponent's still just discarding stuff. I'm going to assume that it's mostly just because of um the game just auto making them do stuff. So we're just gonna play Nicol Bolas and then watch them lose for the timeout trigger. But yeah, dark ritual is kind of a problem. I'm gonna hop on my soapbox for this game and talk about it. Honestly, the craziest part of this game was this wasn't even a done deal. Kaido on turn two is not really that powerful. And honestly, it didn't even really change how the game went. I think the extra card I drew at first was a Tyrant's Scorn. Opponent's going first on Rafine. I think this hand is okay into Rafine. If for nothing else, then we have a Make Disappear in it. Oh, I wish that ours just had been our temple. Okay, well, I guess we're just not drawing any black mana. That's fine. You know, that, that happens, that's okay. <sighs> Sadness. There's one obvious answer here, opponent. Just take the make disappear, come on. Are you high? I guess my opponent is high. <laughs> yeah, I consider what a great cantrip for a ravine deck. I don't know why they're taking Shieldred. Like, I didn't have the colors of mana to play Shieldred. You know what I did have the stuff for? Make Disappear. Speaking of... Make Disappear. Do you ever just watch someone make a really strange decision? Same. They still don't have their white mana. That's very odd. Stern Scolding is an amazing draw. I think we just play Valky and look at their hand. Honestly, this is a bit of a weird one, but I just kind of want to see what's going on over there. Memory Lapse? What if I just miscast your Memory Lapse? We still have our Stern Scolding for their commander. <gasps> Ooh, what a yoink. What a good yoink. That's unfortunate. So we can just we can just flip Valky at like instant speed now. Does this work the way that I think it does? No, it does not. Darn. It does do one extra damage though. Oh, no, you're not playing Rafine, I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. I, I did have another counter spell for you. We 
We do have another counter spell again, too. They can see that I have another removal spell, so I think they'll probably be a little hesitant to just slam Rafine. Curse of Silence named Nickel Bolos, that's fine. That really doesn't bother me all that much. I'm just kind of vibing and buying time right now. That also means they can't play Rafine for an entire turn. Oh look, they shocked in a hollowed fountain, just to still get counterspelled. That was cute. Ooh, Castle Lockthwain. Not useful quite yet, but we'll get there. And when they replay their commander again, we're going to take three life for it, but we will kill it. Oh, they finally did it. They finally went after it. Oh mon dieu. I don't know why they're running so much hand hate. It's very confusing. I like legitimately don't know why they're running so much hand hate. Really? Liliana? That's your game plan? Okay. Whatever, man. You do you, homie. That's a seven mana Rafine. That is going to instantly die. I mean, you can sack it if you want to. Sacking it's not good, by the way. If they sack it, I don't have to pay the life. There they go. And they can't play the Rafine for another couple of turns if I... do this. Otherwise, they'd be able to sack it to Phyrexian Tower and get the extra mana to play the Rafine, which might not sound like a huge deal, but it does add up eventually. Cool. Hang on, how much have they got down there? Yeah. Now they can't replay it! <laughs> Alright, so if I get one more mana, I can play either one of my Nickel Boluses. Hopefully I draw another mana soon, because otherwise we're probably just going to lose. Yay, more mana! Let's try and play this Nickel Bolas first. Yes! It's crime time! Let's go! Is an easy thing to waste. You want to kill that Nickel Bolas? I'm sorry, opponent. I've still already committed the crime. I've already committed the crime. You are now doing the time. <laughs> Yo, thanks for the free scarab, God, bud. I appreciate that. Swords! That's cute. Swords to plowshares. Thanks for the life, buddy. Uh, I think we just kill the murderous rider with Nickel Bolas, right? Unless they play another spell. Okay, they didn't play another spell. We absolutely just, uh... We absolutely just play that tapped, then. I think we want them to play their Rafine as soon as possible. Do they even have anything down there to go get? I mean, they have their ledger shredder. I'm looking. I'm thinking about the final, uh, final chapter of the cruelty of Gix here. In case you're wondering why I'm, what I'm talking about. They're probably gonna go get like a wash away or something. Which will counter whichever thing we play, so we'll probably just play Nickel Bolas first. Get him countered. I don't know why this is taking so long. I feel like this is a pretty easy choice. There's two options here. You grab the spell that kills a planeswalker or you grab the spell that counters a planeswalker because I am playing two planeswalkers. Who knows why that took so long. I will say they are slowly killing themselves, which is very strange. I wonder if my opponent's going to be smart about the Curse of Silence.
The smart play by the Curse of Silence is to not sacrifice it. Hey, look, they're smart. If you're going to counterspell me, you should counterspell me now. There you go. We will draw and card. I... So they had a chance to go get anything they wanted in their deck. Any single card out of their deck, and the card they got was a draw two cards. Look, opponent, I'm not gonna judge you. But that was kind of strange. I'm not gonna judge you too harshly, but that was just kind of strange. Really? All of that for my shielded? I kind of want to be able to do this now. They're 11 mana, Commander. Can I return my shieldred to my hand? Do you have a counterspell opponent? <laughs> or can I put my shieldred back in my own hand? <laughs> they can just Phyrexian Tower it away. Which they should do, but I'm just trying to get resources out of them. I can also just kill it with my bolus. That's not really a big deal. Does my opponent know that the correct thing to do here is to just sacrifice? No, no, they do not. I don't think they know how this game works sometimes, you know? You ever just watch someone play the game and you're like, I'm not quite sure you get this. Like, they could have just done that. They didn't need to spend the wash away. There was no reason to spend that wash away. Alright, how much mana do they got? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They have the 11 mana. We could counter that trigger. <laughs> that might have been worth it, honestly. Um... I think we just hold the tails in to counter a triggered ability of some variety. Alright, we will draw with the castle for the moment because it is pretty cheap overall to draw with the castle. And we still have a tails end to counter some triggered abilities if they go off. Okay, we will Dark Ritual here to be able to play our Liliana while holding up our tails end and my opponent. Your corpse will make an Minion. It was just kind of vibing over there. Oh, we could make a horde of zombies by using the Cabolas' stuff here, but... Yeah, buddy, don't don't let me draw that card. That card was so important. My opponent is desperate right now. Why would you cons- You just stifled me! You clearly had a game plan, right? Like, you just played the stifle. Obviously, you had something in planned. And planned? You had something planned. I'm not gonna lie. The countering of the Tyrant's Scorn was probably one of the worst decisions they made all game. Like, they didn't have to do that. I know they wanted to keep it, but they should have realized that I also had the Nicol Bolas activation. They should have just sacked it to the, to the Phyrexian Tower. Just straight up. That should have been what they did. That is an uncounterable thing. You, you cannot interact with that... Outside of maybe you no, actually split second doesn't even do that split second would happen before they could do that But if they do that you cannot interact with the fact that they sacrificed it because that is just the cost to activate that ability So they should have just done that like I know they really wanted to keep it But they should have just done that and then just kept the wash away for the Liliana But hey happens I guess GG's Opponents going first playing Kinnon. All right Mulligan Mulligan. Mulligan? We got the wash away. Need the bottom two cards. Honestly, the swan song and then the hero's downfall, I think. That's fine. All the cannon all the cool cannons are doing that nowadays. We can still wash them away. Terramorphic Expanse in a Kennen deck? What's the point of that? Are you just running like Tatiova? Are you just like Kennen Simic goodness? Because, like, I can respect it. I 
Mm -hmm. I think we lose now, though. I don't think I can do anything about this cannon anymore. I mean, I can miscast something. Alright, well, we can kill the mana dork. What do they got down there? Two cards! Nice. Suffer as I have! Yes! Another Kinnon bites the dust! I really don't like Kinnon in Historic Brawl. He's one of those commanders that I think maybe should be banned. Just because he provides so much advantage. Just so much advantage. Double the amount of mana your stuff produces. Like, if this had stayed around, and this had stayed around, those two things would have provided four mana. On top of his already existing four mana. His activation is only seven. It's not that expensive for someone who can do that. So we a little bit shorter on this one. A couple of games went pretty short, but that's kind of average for Nicol Bolas. Most games in the super high part of the queue involve lots of people conceding because they know they've lost or because you just like counted their one big win con. So get used to that and get used to seeing stuff like the one ring, tons of strength scolding, swan song, wash away, miscast, spell pierce, all the super cheap interaction. Get used to seeing the dark rituals, the brawls, get used to all of that stuff because, uh, that's what you're going to get if you play this deck. Bolas is a high-tier commander because he is the epitome of Grixis full control. You want to have fun? Ha <laughs> ha, good joke. Very powerful stuff. I like the version that I made. It's a bit more of a true tempo-y control deck. A little bit harder to deal with the Ragavans of the format, but if you're on the play, it's not as big of a deal because we have tons of two-mana interaction. On the one-mana side of things, you really do have to get Fatal Push or Stern Scolding. Which can be pretty difficult to deal with. But you never know. Maybe you'll get lucky and the Ragavan player plays slowly. Either way, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Deck list will be down in the description as per usual. And I hope to catch you in the next one.